Um, good morning. I'm Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. It is an honor to be here today uh, to announce a set of grants that will uh, literally save lives of the brave men and women who work day and night to keep our community safe. And it's a real pleasure to be here with such a distinguished group of colleagues in law enforcement. Uh, We're joined today, among others, by Nassau County Police Department Acting Commissioner Thomas Crumpter, Suffolk uh, County Police Chief of Patrol John Meehan, Nassau County PBA President Jim Carver, Hempstead Police Chief Michael McGowan, Rockville Center Police Chief Charles Gennario. Uh, we are also joined by Charo Lopez, uh, who, uh, whose brother, Nassau County Police Officer Artie Lopez, was killed in the line of duty uh, in 2012 when he was not wearing a bulletproof vest, and she uh, we're very, very pleased and grateful to her for being here today to share her story. Uh, I appreciate being here with my colleagues in law enforcement because uh, we are all uh, safe and we're all able to flee uh, danger and violence because the men and women uh, who are involved in law enforcement in the state of New York have as their jobs to go towards danger and towards violence. They put their lives on the line every day to protect us and everybody knows this is a very dangerous business. Uh, men and women in our police departments confront violent, dangerous criminals all the time, and we don't just owe them a debt of gratitude with words. We owe it to them to do everything we can do to ensure that they are as safe as they possibly can be while they're protecting the safety of others. That's why in June, my, apartment, my department announced the INVEST Partnership. Uh, my office has dedicated $3.5 million in criminal and civil forfeiture funds to reimbursing local law enforcement agencies for up to 50% of the cost of new or replacement bulletproof vests. Bulletproof vests are essential life-saving equipment for our law enforcement officers. We got a stark reminder of this just last Monday when a suspected sex offender opened fire on an NYPD detective and two U.S. Marshals um, in a smoke shop in New York City's Greenwich Village. An NYPD detective was hit at least twice, including once in the chest. The round that struck his chest most likely would have killed him, but it was stopped by his bulletproof vest. Uh, that's the kind of danger our officers face every day. They never know when a routine stop will turn into a violent incident, when serving a warrant could turn into a violent incident, and we have a solemn duty uh, and as a representative of all the people of the state of New York, I feel that I'm taking the action the people of New York would want us to take in fulfilling that duty to provide the best equipment and ensure our officers are, are safe as they possibly can be. So we opened the grant application process on June 9th, and we're now announcing the first round of funding awards. I'm proud to announce that law enforcement agencies in New York City and Long Island will be receiving almost $1.5 million to support the purchase of four, more than 4,700 life-saving bulletproof vests. That includes more than 2,400 vests for the NYPD, almost 1,400 vests for the Nassau County Police Department, uh, 425 vests for the Suffolk County Police Department. Statewide, uh, so far, we have now approved more than $2 million to support the purchase of more than 6,000 vests. I must note that we have set up the INVEST partnership and we were providing these funds to fill a gap uh, that was created when the federal government cut funding for this essential life-saving program. Uh, providing bulletproof vests to police officers should be a no-brainer. I cannot think of any possible objection to this by anyone in government. Since 1984, 95 officers in New York State have been killed by gunfire, including 43 NYPD officers and two Nassau County police officers. And there should not be an officer anywhere in our state and anywhere in the country that has to go into duty without a bulletproof vest. Uh, the United States Congress passed a statute with broad bipartisan support in 1998 called the Bulletproof Vest Grant Act and it provided 50% matching funds for police departments across America. New York State received approximately $25 million through that program to purchase over 212,000 bulletproof vests, which, as we know, save lives. Somehow, our political process in Washington is so broken, uh, and the gridlock that a 
that is afflicting our nation's capital is so bad that the funding for this essential life-saving program has been cut. Since 2010, New York State has seen federal funding for bulletproof vests fall by 81%. That is disgraceful, and that is unacceptable, and that is why we decided to use funds seized from criminals to replace the funds that Congress should be providing. Today's announcement represents the first round of funding, and we are continuing to take applications. We will provide matching funds for as many vests as we can, and while no vest offers 100 percent foolproof protection, more than 3,000 law enforcement officers that we know of have reported cases of having their lives saved by ballistic vests in the last 30 years. Uh, we are going to ensure with the INVEST partnership, working with our colleagues in law enforcement, uh, that we can ensure the same protection for the brave men and women who put on a badge and uniform every day to keep our streets safe. And uh, before we hear from some of our colleagues here, uh, let me say a few words uh, for our Spanish-speaking audience. Uh, nuestros policías ponen su vida en peligro cada día por la seguridad de nuestras comunidades. Cada policía debe estar protegido con un chaleco antibalas. Mi oficina ayudará a cada departamento de policía del estado pro a proteger sus agentes con chalecos antibalas. Un policía bien equipado es nuestra mejor línea de defensa. And with that, I would like to introduce a great colleague in law enforcement, the acting commissioner of the Nassau County Police Department, Thomas Crumpter. Thank you. Thank you. You know, bulletproof vest is not a luxury. It's quite clear that in this country, countless lives has been saved by a bulletproof vest. Today, the attorney general stepped up and fulfilled the gap uh, that was created by the U.S. government by eliminating the funding and significantly reducing the funding to the point that it's no longer, uh, you know, there to provide these vests. Nassau County police officers are going to, uh, you heard it, get 1,400 vests. Those vests are all ready to be ordered. They will be ordered very shortly. Then the police officers will receive those vests over the next several months. So I'd like to personally thank the Attorney General for stepping up to uh, cover a gap that was created by the uh, federal government in this case. Uh, you know, it's, you know, we see it day in and day out. You know, we just saw it within the last week in New York City where a vest saved the police officer's life. It's quite clear it saved the life, uh, you know. So again, I'd like to thank the Attorney General for his generosity and uh, stepping up and fulfilling a hole that was created by the U.S. government. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and now I'd like to introduce another great colleague in law enforcement, the Suffolk County Police Chief of Patrol, John Meehan. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm John Meehan. I'm the Chief of Patrol in Suffolk County. Uh, let me start by extending the regrets of Police Commissioner Edward Weber, who was, a, was not able to be here today for, for this very important announcement, which has been said, the earmarking by the Attorney General of uh, asset forfeiture funds to assist local lo police departments in, pr in the purchase of ballistic vests. Now, our primary responsibility as police administrators is to recognize the hazards that police officers face day in and day out and equip, equip them with the best means possible with the things they need to provide for public safety and provide for safety for themselves. These vests do just that. And making them available to every member of the department is a critical element of uh, the very solemn responsibility that we as police administrators have. Now, now, like most departments, we require our officers to wear their vest every day, and they do. But uh, we also know that they don't last forever. They wear out. We retire our vests after seven years. With this money that this program provides, we'll be assured that despite the fiscal uh, situation that everyone is facing right now, that these ballistic vests will continue to be available to every member of our department. Fifteen years ago, we were reminded of the importance of vests when a member of our department, Police Officer Marlene Tully, survived what would have been a fatal gunshot wound to the chest when she interrupted a robbery of a gas station in progress. But not only protection from gunshots, these vests also minimize the severity of uh, d damage to officers when they're involved in a motor vehicle crash by reducing blunt force trauma to the chest. Suffolk County Police Department applied for and was approved to receive, as been said, almost $140,000 for vests, which translates to 425 vests. What that really means is a tremendous amount of safety for our officers, 
but just as importantly, a tremendous amount of peace of mind for their families. On behalf of the cops and the citizens of Suffolk County, I'd like to extend my sincere appreciation to the Attorney General, not only for this program, for his tremendous support of law enforcement overall. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate that. One of the best experiences, I have to say, uh, since becoming your Attorney General has been uh, the terrific collaboration we have with law enforcement agencies around the state, and it's certainly true here in Long Island. Uh, the seamlessness with which we work with our colleagues, uh, whether it's our organized crime task force or otherwise, has been a great experience. I'm honored to be a part of you, uh, this important essential function of society, because in my view, the first commitment of government is that all people should be safe in their homes and on their streets, no matter what community they live in. And uh, we're now honored to introduce uh, Charo Lopez, uh, who is here because her brother, a Nassau County police officer, was killed in the line of duty in 2012, uh, and a bulletproof vest, we believe, sadly, could have saved his life. Um, Charo? Thank you. C-H-A-R-O Lopez, L-O-P-E-Z. Good morning, everyone. My name is Charo Lopez. My brother, Arthur Lopez, was a police officer here in Nassau County. Almost two years ago today, Artie was shot and killed in the line of duty when he pulled the vehicle over on a traffic stop on the border of the Nassau-Queens border. As my brother approached the vehicle, the man inside shot him in the chest, killing him. Artie was not wearing a bulletproof vest when he was shot. Too often, police officers don't wear vests while on routine patrol. Some officers don't have vests because their departments can't afford them. Some don't wear the vest because it's a hand-me-down and it doesn't fit properly. Some officers just don't think that they would need a, in a particular situation. But I'm here to tell you, no officer should ever walk a beat, respond to a call, or chase down a lead without wearing a bulletproof vest. It is impossible to overstate the importance of providing bulletproof vests to the men and women in law enforcement that protect us every day. Had Artie been wearing his vest on that October day, there'd be a good chance he would be with us today, standing behind us. My family and I made the sad trip to the courthouse last week to watch Artie's killer be convicted of murder. We have an obligation to protect the officers that protect us, and that's why I am here today. I believe that this program will literally save lives. Attorney General Schneiderman's invest partnership will help others, will help officers make it home to their families at the end of the day, and nothing is more important than that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for um, your strength and courage in sharing, sharing that with us. And uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, the Nassau County PBA President, Jim Carver. Thank you, Eric. Um, you know, how do you follow up with what Charo was just talking about? Uh, it should be mandated that every police officer wears his vest every single day. The, the slight discomfort that you might have on a given day and a day like this is is something that uh, is well worth the, uh, the final result if you do get into a counter with somebody uh, with a gun. Again, I think the last time I think we ordered vests here in Nassau County were back in 2007, 2008. And as the uh, Chief of Patrol from Suffolk mentioned, about a seven year uh, you know, wear uh, you know, length that they have on them. You know, in my opinion, it should be less. It should be about five years. And this money is going to provide to uh, uh, protection for my police officers. And it's good during these times when law enforcement sometimes doesn't get the, uh, the good press that we have an attorney general who's willing to step up to the plate, do the right thing and provide the funding that was lacking and make up that difference to make sure that our police officers who put their lives on the line every single day are protected. Again, I want to thank you for, uh, for taking care of our police officers here on Long Island. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Um, and with that, we can take some questions. Uh, Matt will... Sure.